Hi. Today we're talking about Henry Miller pianos. Now, if you're not familiar with the name Henry Miller, it is an old American piano company. Now, Henry Miller himself was a classical pianist in the Boston area during the mid-1800s, and he was frustrated because at the time, he could not find a piano that was responsive enough, that had the characteristics of tonal quality that he was looking for. Now, this is predates even Steinway uh, during about the 1850s, and so finally, Henry Miller decided to, that he could build the piano he was looking for, and so he completed several apprenticeships, and in 1863, founded Henry Miller Piano Company. Now, since then, the company, of course, like many other companies, has changed hands many times. Uh, but the vision that Henry Miller had for the pianos, we really believe, exists in the current version of the Henry Miller piano. Now, many of Amro's piano technicians themselves have had some input onto the design of the current Henry Miller piano lineup, uh, some of the features, and we really feel like that it includes many uh, of the higher-end features that you wouldn't get in a similarly priced competitive piano. So today we're going to take kind of a tour around the Henry Miller Grand Piano and talk about some of the features that you'll find in it. So here we go. Alright, so we're taking a look here in the interior of this Henry Miller Piano. Let's talk about some of the materials that are selected for use in the Henry Miller Piano lineup. Let's start with the strings. Now many of the finest pianos in the world use Roslau string wire from Germany. It's a company that's been in existence for many years. Uh, really one of the most respected and highest quality wires that's out there. And that's what's used here in the Henry Miller piano. It's very high carbon content steel for the alto and treble. In the bass strings, it's that same steel core. It's a hand-spun copper around that core. Now, that strings are where the tone begins, and so we want to have the most resonant possible material that's used, and the Roslaw company really is the company that's out there doing that. Let's take a look at the hammers and the dampers. It's a virgin English wool. Uh, many cheaper pianos will actually just use a cheaper um, artificially spun felt, but not here in the Henry Miller piano. We're using true English wool in the pianos. In fact, 22 pounds of it here in the uh, five foot one grand piano. Let's move on to the sound plate. One of the most important and strongest points in the piano. Now this sound plate has to hold up to over 40,000 pounds of cumulative string tension. Uh, and that's important for helping the piano stay in tune and just for the structural integrity of the instrument. Now, in many cheaper pianos, you'll find that the companies, when they pour the plates, they simply fill the molds with iron, and whatever comes out of that mold is the plate that you're going to get. But every Henry Miller goes through a 32-step hand finishing process and adjustment process to make sure that each plate meets the individual uh, tolerances that are needed to create a high-quality musical instrument. If the plate doesn't fit those specifications, it's melted down and recast. Now, Underneath the plate and underneath the strings, of course, is the heart of the piano, the soundboard. Now, again, in a lot of cheaper pianos and, and uh, comparable priced pianos, you'll find either a uh, spruce laminated plate or even sometimes a plywood plate. Now, why is it so important that we have solid spruce? Now, spruce itself as a wood is very dense, but it's very flexible. And what that does is it takes the energy that, that's created by the strings when they're vibrated and it amplifies it basically and it allows the sound waves to travel through the edge of the, through the piano all the way to the case and to have a solid spruce soundboard allows the sound to travel basically uninterrupted all the way through that and that's something you don't find on every entry point piano like we do here on the Henry Miller now the engine if you will of any piano is the action now that's the mechanism that moves the hammers and really that's connected to a lot of different components there's almost twenty thousand parts inside any grand piano and so when we talk about the action specifically we are referring from the keys all the way up through the hammers and the dampers and all of those moving components inside there now i like to challenge people to play the action here on a Henry Miller and to play it side by side with an Essex grand piano. Now an Essex is one of the Steinway designed grand pianos and I find them personally to be both very enjoyable and very similar even. So I think that's a testament to the quality of the Henry Miller action here. Uh, there's all, all wood action, there's no plastic parts there. It is a very classic, elegant design. Uh, it's very responsive, feels terrific under the fingers. One final distinguishing point here about the Henry Miller and some of the key structural components of this instrument is the pin block. Now we can see the tuning pins 
that stretch all the way across the width of the instrument. Now those are drilled into a 21 layer hard rock maple pin block. The pin block's one of the most important factors along with the sound plate for helping the piano stay in tune. And hard rock maple is one of the densest, most hardwoods that's out there. And by using 21 layers of uh, wood that are all laminated at opposing directions, that basically creates a tight, tight force around each of the individual tuning pins. Now each of these tuning pins is hand drilled uh, the slot for it to within thousands of an inch of tolerances and that's so important in a piano because any deeper or any wider of a hole that's drilled there if there's any mistakes in the manufacturing process is going to cause the string to possibly slip and hold uh, not hold tune and so then we get that honky tonk sound at best and if it's really bad then it'll sound like two distinct notes because remember now the bass strings we might have just one string per note but here in the alto and up into the or into the treble and the alto we'll have two or even three strings per note those unisons have to be tuned properly and that's one of the things that uh, technicians really comment about the Henry Miller pianos is how well these instruments hold tune. One other feature that's not as visible to the untrained eye on the Henry Miller pianos is the tail. Now that's the back end here on the right side of the screen of the piano and one neat feature about the Henry Miller piano is that it utilizes a wide tail design. Now that's a feature that you'll find in Steinway design pianos like the Boston and the Essex. Now why is that important? Now as you can see here as we're looking at the rear of the piano you'll see that as the curve of the uh, tail wraps around you'll see it flattens out for a while. Now that tail, that wide tail design allows for a larger sounding board because it widens and allows more surface area inside the piano. So that allows longer bass strings, that allows a larger sound board. It's going to allow the piano to uh, ring and sustain longer and to resonate with more fullness with a richer tone. That's one of the things that we look for in a piano and typically you have to move up in size of the piano in order to get a more resonance but with that wide tail design it's a nice way to sneak some extra tone into the similar size piano. I hope this gave you a little bit more information about the Henry Miller piano line. We'd love to share even more details about it with you. We'd love to schedule an appointment for you to come in and play the instrument for yourself. If you did find this helpful, hit the subscribe button and give us a call at 901-325-6402. And as always, thanks for watching.